Hello everyone. This will be my final Monday message to you uh, until our week of our concert. It's been such an honor and privilege to be able to talk to you every week about what the Indianapolis Children's Choir has been doing during this time. It's been a long road and when we first began the season, we didn't think this is the way it would end. However, we were able to turn a bad situation into a situation where art was still made and we learned so much. We have so many new tools that will benefit singers and families for years to come. I have to say how proud I am of our artistic staff for their amazing work during this time, for the administrative staff who has continued to support us, to you, our singers and families for sticking by us giving us grace as we learned, and then helping us along the way realize that there is a lot that we can do even though we are far apart. And also to our donors and supporters, thank you for continuing to fund the work of the Indianapolis Children's Choir. It is so vital that we are here and able to provide this service during this time to our community. Well, just a few more notes before I close. You should be receiving emails from your directors about our virtual choir concert on June 11th. All the instructions are located in that email. You will receive a link to a Google folder. In that Google folder, you will have the set of instructions, the background that you will use, and also an instructional video with myself and my daughter, Annabelle, to help you. There are two folders in there, one that has the tracks, the music itself that you will sing with. The other is the folder where you will place your finished videos. Please make sure you label those as the instructions say. No other choir in the United States has tried something like this. I'm so very proud to be able to work on this with you. It is going to show people what we are truly capable of and the artistry and the community the education and the excellence that the Indianapolis Children's Choir stands for. Graduates, yesterday you should have received a special visit from some ICC alum and some of you on the north side got a special visit from me. I can't tell you how great it was to see your faces. It has been so long since we have been able to gather in person and just having a few minutes on your front lawn talking was a true joy for me because you are the reason why we do what we do. But we still have one more thing for you. Make sure you tune in on July 10th. We will have your graduation ceremony virtually. And then again, on July 11th, we have another special visit. I promise I'll be making some more visits to some of you. Our ninth grade recognition will occur virtually on June 10th. That evening, we will have your recognition ceremony and then on June 11th, the day of our concert, I'll be making some special visits to our ninth graders. So I can't wait to see you then. Please make sure though, for our virtual concert, all videos are in the folder ready to go by May 29th. Now I need some help from you. Right now it's time for auditions. Many of you have auditioned and I'm so glad that you are still going to be a part of the Indianapolis Children's Choir. But you, our singers and families, are the best source of marketing that we could have. We're asking that if you know anybody who is interested in being a part of this community, please tell them about the ICC. We have a great opportunity in July where they can try our summer camp online. They'll get to know myself, Mrs. Dwyer, Mrs. Southard, and so many more on the faculty and staff of the Indianapolis Children's Choir. And then, Hopefully they'll audition and want to be a part of the family, just like you. So please talk to them. If they can't be a part of that, please let them know that we are holding auditions virtually right now. And we will be able to schedule them and get them into the family because, you know, who doesn't want to sing during a time like this? Now, one final thing. I want to talk to you about next year. Yeah, this year we had some bumps. But next year is our 35th anniversary season, and I could not be more excited, partially because it's my fifth season as your artistic director. 
you know, when I came on board, um, we thought the hardest thing was going to be transitioning from a founder to a new artistic director. Who knew that it would be COVID-19, a pandemic? However, we've made it through. We have learned so much and we have so much more to do together. In our next season, we have so many amazing things planned. We have amazing guest clinicians and artists that are going to be uh, with us because of the wonderful video technology that we now have and we know how to use. You're gonna be working with some incredible people from not only within the United States, but around the world. Now, let me give you a little preview of what's to come next year. Our fall, we hope to see everybody back in August. Master Crowell will start on August 16th. The rest of the choirs will start the week of August 17th. Our fall concert is called Hymn to Freedom. What better way to open than to talk about those wonderful freedoms that we all have and that freedom that we hopefully will once again enjoy of gathering together and singing amazing music. Our holiday concert, it's gonna be a little different this year. We're moving from St. Luke's United Methodist Church to Clues Memorial Hall. And it's going to be entitled Home for the Holidays. It's also going to have a special feature of our alumni. I think it's something you're really going to enjoy. And it's going to be a special weekend for all of us. Then we move into our March concert at Hilbert. And this is all about a Broadway journey with special guest, Sarah Scarborough McLaughlin. It's gonna have some incredible music and take us down that journey of Broadway, all those musicals that we know and love. And what a great time to be able to celebrate that because hopefully Broadway will be reopening by then. And then we'll close out our season with a concert called One Voice, our In Harmony, where we come together and sing as a united choir. And then we'll top off our 35th anniversary season by taking all singers, anyone who wants to participate, to New York City and put them on the stage of Carnegie Hall. It's something that it, no one is going to want to miss. And it's something that in our 35 year history, no one has ever done. But look what we've been able to do these past weeks. I know nothing is impossible for the Indianapolis Children's Choir when we all work together and have hope. Now, I'm gonna tell you next year might look a little different. Social distancing may be in place. We may have to take a few weeks off because we are not able to gather. So cleaning can take place because there may be a spike in the infection rate, but we'll be ready. Over the next few months, we are going to work tirelessly to prepare and plan for that. But I want you to remember one thing. A friend of mine said this, if choir is only about singing and performing, performing, then we are not going to have choir for a while. But if choir is about teaching and learning, growing, connecting, community, cultural exploration and transmission, and innovating, we will find a way and we will have choir. And isn't that what we are about? Yes, it's sad that we can't be physically together. However, fire still was happening. Growth was still happening. Training was still happening. And I could not be more proud of that. Not in the way we would like to do it, nor typically do it. However, you stuck with it. You know, I think our 34th season is one that will go down in the history books. We will remember this for a long time. And in some ways, it reminds me of that song from Wicked. I have been changed for good. Let's always carry this with us. Always remembering to watch out for one another. To care for one another to always take the obstacles that are placed before us and use them for good. How can we make the best of the things
gifts that are given to us. I am so fortunate and privileged to be able to serve as your artistic director. I wake up in the morning thinking not only about my family, but about the singers in this organization. It is a great honor to be able to have led you through this time. And it is an honor to be able to say that you are all a part of my family. Thank you for everything you have done for the Indianapolis Children's Choir. And I look forward to seeing you all on June 11th at our virtual concert.